What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Dan Fall. We back and we live for episode nine. I'm sorry for the hiatus. You know, I was going through some, you know, regular issues and shit like that. You know, I'm a human being. I'm regular. Just like y'all paying bills, things and that sort. But I know y'all can give a damn about all of that. I'm going to speak about some things that, you know, y'all care about. Takashi 69 booked. You know, he's been booked for a couple months now. But we have some developing news, some breaking news, some entertaining news. Is he a rat? Is he a snitch? Bitch nigga, remember he was saying all that? Vicky up, Sicky got the blicky up. Remember all that? Like, he was a snitch nigga. You got three people indicted, bruh, bruh. You know, like one of my first episodes in the studio, I was speaking highly of Takashi. I'm like, yo, I like this boy. I like his tactics. I like his antics. You know, now some of the things I feel like it wasn't the, smart, the smartest approach he could have took. But then again, I'm like, yo, he's a young boy. He's marketing himself to the point where people are going to look for him. People are looking for some type of content, good or bad. You know, good publicity, bad publicity is kind of the same thing because you're being spoke about <clears throat> or spoken of. Now, Takashi, right, you know, they're looking at him like he's a, a, a kingpin of this whole operation of the, what you call this squad? Um... What is this guy? Trey Ray? You know, he was hyping shit. Trey Ray? You know, he throwing up all that shit. Now, we all know he ain't no kingpin of the damn uh, Trey Ray. Shoddy was supposed to be one of the main boys there. Now, reports are saying that Shoddy is snitching on 6 9 Y'all probably like, how? How do you know this, Dev? You know, I'm doing my reports, you know? Takashi 6 9 and Shoddy, they had the same lawyer. I'm not sure if y'all noticed, Takashi was supposed to have a, a plea um, <clears throat> hearing not too long ago. It got postponed due to the fact that Takashi's lawyer stepped away from the case. Because that lawyer had some information that conflicted, you know, the story that they both have. Shadi and Takashi 6 9 So a lot of people are like, well, he knows something that can get Takashi booked. Uh, or keep him in jail for the rest of his life or whatever the case may be. So I'm going to remove myself from the situation. Now I'm looking at it like, okay, cool. <clears throat> How is Sakashi 6 9 the rat in this situation if he didn't initially <clears throat> come out and say, hey, everyone, get me. I mean, if he's, if he's a kingpin, basically, if he's a kingpin, why are they trying to get him a deal? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Now, they're saying that the shooter... Um, that was involved in this Chief Keith thing is the person that Takashi told on. Takashi is allegedly um, <clears throat> set to testify against the shooter. Now, if he does that, I'm going to look at him like he is a rat. He is a snitch. All this shit that you was rapping about, I can't take serious. I don't, I don't look at you serious. Like, it wasn't that much you were saying anyway, lyrically, but it was just the fact that you was energetic. You gave me that vibe, like... Yeah, like you on that type of time, you feel me? I feel like it's going to be a detriment to your career. You know, you're not going to be looked at the same. You know, you got people like Bobby Schmurter from New York. He said, he said for his time. You know, he was actually a real nigga, as some consider or classify, because when he got booked, half of his team got booked, right? They gave his team a lot of years. This nigga said, they say, yo, we're gonna give you some years. He said, nah, yo, I want y'all to cut his time and add more years, or I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but it was more so, in order for him <clears throat> to get a certain amount of time, you're gonna get a certain amount of time. And he said, all right, cool, I'm gonna get the same time as my man. He could have went home earlier, yo. This nigga sitting seven years, you feel me? But he about to get out next year. I don't know if it was seven years. I highly doubt if it was seven years. But Bobby Smurr is getting out next year. In December, I believe. Takashi, yo, when you get home, bro, people ain't gonna look at you the same, yo. It's sad. You got some boy named Blueface coming at your chick on Instagram. You know, it was funny because when you was out in jail, bro, you know, out of jail, you know, you was coming at Chief Keith, baby mom, coming at all these girl, baby, you know, all these um, baby moms and shit. But now someone playing around with your baby mom, bro. It's a lot of shit I just don't respect, which is no more um, Takashi. Like I said, you was. He was my boy. He was my favorite young boy um, with this rap shit, man. You know, I feel as though some of your antics is the reason why people started to listen to you, like myself. But all that snitching shit, man, I don't know, bro, at the end of the day. Like I said, I'm not in that position, but I know I ain't, I ain't being in that position. I'm not going to do all that. Now, we're going to move it over, though. 
<clears throat> to a, a serious topic of Jesse Smollett. Smollett. Now, Jesse Smollett is from Empire. A lot of people know who he is. He's the, um, <clears throat> he's the, uh, he's one of the breakout stars for the show. You know, he's actually a sister of, I said a sister, the brother of another Smollett. She played on, damn, what movie did she play on? She played on a lot of movies. She, matter of fact, she played on, um, Road Bounce with Bow Wow. Her sister, his sister is the lady, the girl with the braces. Y'all probably don't know who I'm talking about. But remember this one scene when it was one of the guys walking right down the line and he was like, open your mouth. And she started smiling. She had all her grills out and they were just clowning her. That's <clears throat> his sister. Now, Jesse Smollett got attacked um, in Chicago Tuesday morning um, around 2 o'clock by these two white men. And they are saying it was a homophobic attack. I feel as though it was a hate crime. You feel me? At the end of the day. Now, a lot of people, I know I'm going to offend someone. I know I am, because I always offend someone on my show. But <clears throat> I don't look to do it intentionally. But I feel as though they're using this homophobia attack in regards of a racial attack. I mean, that's how I personally feel. At the end of the day, why, Dev? Because... It's not just the African American community you gotta worry about now. You got the LGBT. <laughs> you feel me? And you know they damn near, and this is fucked up to say, but they're damn near more noticeable than the African American community because their voice, yo, these motherfuckers come out of nowhere, bro. You say something real bad, they take anything the wrong way, and they're they're protesting, they're they're they they at you. Now, this guy got broken ribs, a noose was tied around his neck or placed around his neck and all this extra shit with racial slurs and things of that sort. Now, we already know the man's gay, so they're gonna automatically attach homophobic and um, homophobic attack to this. I'm looking at it like this. They said the man got called the N-word. I don't know if they, I don't know what um, homophobic uh, slur that they used, but I'm pretty sure I know what they used. And on top of that, they was plotting on him. He was receiving letters maybe two weeks prior to that to Fox Studio with him specifically addressed to with the word MAGA on the back of it. And when he got attacked, they said this is what he's, the person said, MAGA, this is MAGA country. This and the third. I'm not sure if they said MAGA, but they were saying MAGA, like M-A-G-A instead of M-E-G-A. And I was just like, but damn, this is the world we live in. It's the world we live in. This is a celebrity. A lot of people know who he is, you know. <clears throat> he probably is a regular human being walking down the street. But if you watch shows like I do, I recognize who he is. You know, um, now you got some people feel as though it's fake or it was staged or it's not real. Why is that? Because they said they need some type of surveillance. They need some type of evidence. You feel me? It makes me think. Now watch this. Now I'm about to really touch on a topic that I didn't speak on because I haven't been shooting in the last two, three weeks. Y'all need evidence. Y'all need some type of proof. It's gonna sound fucked up, but I'm not gonna say it. What about this R. Kelly, surviving R. Kelly thing? Now, I wanna speak on that. A lot of people got their own opinions on it. I wanted to speak on this weeks ago, but I'm gonna speak on it briefly right now. It's a lot of women coming at R. Kelly, you know? Um, I don't necessarily believe everything that I'm hearing, because I'm not, oblivious like that or naive like that. I like to do homework. But I look at it like this. Don't you feel as though R. Kelly has a right to say something? And I'm, I don't want y'all to think I'm agreeing with R. Kelly or I'm on his side because I'm definitely not. But what I'm saying is I just want y'all to take this comparison of, of evidence and some type of proof with the video of the guy Justice Smiley getting attacked in Chicago with these females saying that they were kidnapped or mistreated or physically abused, abused, we don't see no pictures. We don't see no videos. We're just hearing stories. What's the difference between Bill Cosby? There's no evidence. We're just going off of word of mouth, going off of stuff that happened over here, like almost a decade ago. You get what I'm saying? And it's all tying back down to African Americans, you know? Um, like I said, Bill Cosby's situation is a little different due to the fact that he didn't deny anything, in a sense. 
You got R. Kelly, who's denying everything. And people still looking at him like he's crazy. And then you got people saying that, uh, it's this African American woman, woman, women. So no one is gonna take them serious as they do white women. So it just make you just think like, so what about this whole Jesse Smollett? No one's believing him now? But he got a tag with a new something that. So it just it just makes you just think like, yo, like just be careful on what you read and, and how you perceive it or you know, break it down because at the end of the day, I don't think that Jesse Smollett is lying about getting attacked like this. He got everyone in the world reaching out to him, like praying that he recovers fast. It's fucked up what happened to him. I really hope he um, recovers well and recovers fast. But you just gotta watch your back out here, to be honest with you. I feel like <clears throat> anybody nowadays feel as though they're untouchable because they're at a certain position in life. That's a prime example that no one is un untouchable. Two o'clock in the morning, you think you can go home or this, that, and the third. You walking somewhere and next thing you know, these two guys out of nowhere with ski masks put a noose around your neck, break your damn ribs, and calling you a nigga. And I don't mean you can censor that out, but calling you that. You feel me? Like, come on, man. This is the, this is the world we live in. But I want to speak on something real, 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 real serious. I want to speak on this Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris, I was excited like a motherfucker. I ain't gonna lie to you. I gotta take a drink on that one. Huh? What's up, Yangling? Even though you're not sponsoring me, what's up? But listen, um, <clears throat> I feel like Kamala Harris, when I seen that, right? I was like, oh shit, didn't do no homework like a motherfucker. I'm gonna be honest with you, I'll tell you, because I call people out who don't do this, who do this. I was hyped. I'm like, oh shit. Martin Luther King Day, a black African, I'm an African American woman saying that she's running for president. Oh shit, I'm hype as shit. I post a damn picture up. I'm behind you, queen. I'm saying everything positive. Then I got some people, like, hold up, hold, bro, she ain't it. So I'm like, I'm gonna disregard that. I ain't. Uh. Then my pop came on there and said some shit. My dad, he like me. He blunt. So a lot of people might not agree with what he's gonna say, and a lot of people might agree with what he's gonna say. So. He said some shit that had me cracking up because I can see he wrote on my con on my, my post and I can actually imagine him saying this. He's like, yo, man, it's a lot of black people being naive saying that she's for us, this, that, and the third, and y'all got to do your homework and all that like shit. So I'm like, all right, cool. My boy tagged me in this post and said, yo, look at this post about Kamala Harris. I said, all right, cool, I'm going to look at it. I looked at this post and they were saying that she wasn't for African-American men, um, saying that she wants to have parents arrested or sent to jail if they're skipping kids are skipping school things of that sort right i'm like damn okay cool yesterday something that said dev just do your research i finally did my research on this lady to my best i ain't gonna say to my best ability but the research i came up with so i'm gonna break it down real quick this lady went to an hbcu she's a senator currently in california she was a prosecutor you know, a lot of people probably recognize her from this Brett Kavanaugh case. Y'all remember that? You know, she was heavily intense. She was intensely, like, attacking him. Like, saying all this shit and making him seem like a kid or a child. You know, making him crack. Trying to make him crack, in a sense. Now, and when she was a prosecutor, she was sending a lot of people to jail. You know? And y'all probably seeing her like, all right, Dad, don't you think that's something she's supposed to do? She's a prosecutor. All right, cool. But as a prosecutor, don't you, do you feel like she's for the people if she's a prosecutor? Because a lot of people, especially, and she's African-American, we looking at it like, why would we put somebody in a house and she's arresting motherfuckers, like, for certain things? Now, I'm looking at it like this. This is only one thing I, I, I agree with, with her. Like I said, I'm pretty sure she's a, a, a good person, you know? Like my man T just said, yo, my homegirl and shit. I almost thought he knew it, for, for, for example, and shit. I was like, oh, shit. But, you know, I value everyone's opinion, you feel me, at the, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the end of the day. So I'm looking at it like, all right, I'm not, <laughs> I'm laughing at him, I'm laughing at him. But I'm looking at it like, all right, cool. Um, I want to hear what information he has to tell me. Because I'm always going to apply information to me, I mean, to myself. So when he said what he had to say, I told him, it's one thing that I agree with. She's trying to get Medicare for everyone, you know. And that's something that a lot of people feel as though is impossible. You know, so for those that don't understand what that means, 
I'm gonna break it down to my best ability. So let's say, for example, like T said, if you want an operation at somewhere and your doctor's out of town and you just think that you can't get the operation done because your doctor's not around, it's not true. You can go to this place, you can go to this place, you can go to that place, but why don't we go there? We don't know the price. There's no price tag. You know, we go to Walmart, got the price scan and shit like that. How much is this called? We don't know ass, just scan it and you'll see. We can't even do that. You know what happens in today's society? You know? My grandpa came out the hospital before he passed away and shit, and he said, he said, and it's crazy because he got this shit right on the nose. He said, yo, I better get a $20,000 bill, uh, a $20,000 um, bill or check on the mail. I'm like, get the fuck out of here, dog. I'm like, nah, here, man. Insurance, he had, um, took uh, care of the majority of that. We had to pay like maybe two something. But other than that, $18,000 deduction? Get the fuck out of here. You don't know what you're getting until you got it done. And it's not like you're gonna say, matter of fact, yo, take this back, yo. Take this shit back. I don't want it no more. You already got it, boy. Now you in debt. Like, we don't know what the fuck to expect when we go into the hospital or we don't know what to expect when we looking at these bills. So that's one thing I agree with. Like Canada, they got that shit like that. You feel me? It's a lot of things that a lot of people feel as though it's uncomfortable. I mean, it's impossible. And it's making people uncomfortable because that's gonna make insurance companies lose money, you know? Now let's go back to Kamala Harris. The things that people feel as though she's a little sneaky or dirty or slimy for. They said that she had a sexual, I mean, not sexual, she had an affair with um, a former senator of San Diego, what's his name? Willie Monroe or Willie Brown? Excuse me, if I'm messing the name up. Willie, that's, a, that's all I know, his name is Willie. Now, he spoke on her, saying that that happened, and he helped her, all right? And then he also said he helped a lot of different people as well, not just her, you feel me? So we're not just gonna shame her and act like she's no one. You know, I'm not gonna do that, because bad enough that happens enough for the African-American women nowadays. But one thing I will say, they feel as though when she was um, nominated or elected Senate, 62% of her votes came from the people that are donating to her. PAC money, that's what they saying. A lot of people feel as though she's a corporate candidate. She's not a candidate for the people. And as piggyback on that, like I said, I don't want y'all to attack me. I know it's a lot of feminists looking at me like, oh no, don't do it, you black come, no, I'm not. I'm just going off of what YouTube and Google are showing me. Now, if y'all want to dissect uh, what I'm saying and, and I'm telling me I'm wrong, just, just tell me I'm wrong. I'm not, I'm not a perfect person. You feel me? Just let me know I'm wrong. But what I'm telling you is, Kamala Harris supposedly slept her way to the top. Supposedly. I, I wasn't there. This is what I'm hearing. This is what I'm hearing. You feel me? And they feel as though the reason she's in this position is because of the fact that she had an affair with this guy. You know, um, me personally, once Obama got out of office, it's only one woman that I feel as though is kind of equipped for this presidential candidate or the presidential role. Her name not Hillary, her name not Michelle Obama. And her name is not Kamala Harris. Her name is Elizabeth Warren. I don't know if you know about her, T, but I like Elizabeth. I like Elizabeth because she's live and direct. And one thing she did that made me pay attention to her is when she came at Betsy DeVoe. Um, Betsy DeVoe is, I believe she's a secretary of education. I might be wrong with the title, but I believe she's the Secretary of Education. You got a lady in Secretary of Education with no experience in it. And you know what she did. Elizabeth Warren was right at her neck about what are you doing? What are you doing with the student loans? What are you doing with financial aid? And this lady was trying to cut off financial aid for certain people. And, 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 and Elizabeth was like, hold up. How are you going to cut off financial aid for these people, especially the minorities, and you're not even in a position to be relatable or how can I say, you're not even in position to relate to the people that you're trying to cut this shit off from. She said, have you, have your kids been to college or have they been government assisted? No. Okay, cool. So what do you, how are you capable of having this position? Like if you have no experience doing this? She didn't have an answer. And you know when people get uncomfortable, they smile and shit. They like, hopefully this smile make me get away from this question. No, it's not. We trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. You know, Elizabeth Warren, 
she got my vote, and I don't even think she, um, I don't even think that she announced anything, you know, but like I said, if it was a woman to vote for. Her. Now, Kamala, now, I'm pretty sure it's a lot of positive things is gonna come out, you feel me? Now, it's one thing that I will say, I'm not dumb, I'm not oblivious to this. I watched presidential debates since 2008, when I was a senior in high school. Why? Because it was someone named Barack Obama running for president. And I see me seeing an African American run for president made me want to be more inclined or um, aware of politics. So I started watching debates. I started watching this. I started watching that. One thing I'm a little scared is scared for is the fact that she's thinking about debating Trump. Now we already know what Trump want to do. If y'all watch any of Trump debates, we know what he do to his own people. So what make you think what he's not, he's not going to do anything to her? She's going to see everything she's going to say about a wall, preventing a wall, and he's going to sit here and say, but didn't you get your wall knocked down by a senator? I'm being real. This is the shit that Trump says. I mean, he, not, he may not say it like that, but we know what he do. Like, he, I'm being real. I don't want y'all to think I'm being funny. She got to be prepared for shit like that. I was listening to Kieran T. Harris Morning Show this morning. He cracked it up. Chris T. Harris Morning Show this morning. And... QDZ was keeping it a beam. He was talking and he was like, yo, about this Kamala Harris. Um, <clears throat> Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. So basically, he said in order for her to get some type of leverage in this race, she had to put herself out there. And I was like, wow. And that's when Tremaine Dolly was saying. And he was like, it's to the point where you got to lie about a DUI. You had to lie about... Your, your uncle having selling crack. You gotta lie about so much shit. Or she would have said, he would have said, you gotta put so much out there where no one is using your information against you. Basically, you had to pull an eight mile. And the eight mile, when, once he said an eight mile, I knew exactly what he was talking about. Basically, for those that's lost, eight mile, when B Rab and Eminem was battling Papa Doc or the people of the free world, he had to directly come at himself, talk about himself. So these people can't talk shit about them. You feel me? So what are you going to say about me? I put myself out there. You feel me? So that's what the approach that they want her to do. Um, I'm not sure if it'll be a smart idea because I feel like if she does take that approach, it's almost like you're trying to kick yourself off the race. And it's just like, yo, don't, don't degrade yourself. You know, we didn't see Hillary do that, honestly. You know, we didn't see Bill Clinton say, all right, y'all, I fucked up. You know, y'all know who my wife is. But this, that, and the theory, like, we know what it is, and we got to sweep that under the rug. You feel me? That's, that's the reality of it. I just feel like it's a lot of shit that needs to be prepared um, going up for a debate against Trump because he's not no person that you get his thing. I'm going to write a small little note down. Trump is not dumb as he look. He ain't, you know. I don't like Trump. I don't support Trump. But one thing I will say is he's not a nut. He's blunt. And he's going to tell you how, how it is, whether we agree with it or not. That's something that I wanted Obama to do, but Obama was a puppet, unfortunately. It was so much he could do, you know? And I feel like everyone is a puppet, but certain people they give more leeway to, you know? And I know for a fact they're not going, and I'm not, I'm, you know, for those that don't know, when anytime for me saying T or Dre, you know, those are the people that's on the team and shit, they, they behind the camera. So y'all not going to see them. But, you know, just like T was saying, man, um, that's his homie and shit. And I feel like uh, it's a lot of people. It's supporting a lot of different people. Like I said, I support Bernie Sanders. My man running for president again, he got my vote. And Elizabeth Warren running for president, she got my vote. Now, if I got to choose between those two, I might not vote. Just being honest with you, because I'm going to be stuck between the two. I'm going to be honest with you. You feel me? So I just want a lot of people to be aware of a lot of different things. Now, NBA. We're going to speak on this NBA real quick. I'm not sure if y'all know, because I don't speak on sports on my show, even though the show was supposed to be about sports when I first started the show. Um, NBA just made this blockbuster trade. I don't know what the fuck going on, but Chris Persingas <laughs> to the Mavericks? What the hell is going on? They try to make him a new dirt. With Luca, the um, rookie of the year, they got rid of Dennis Smith. They said, we don't got time for your bitch ass attitude 
and you pouting and stuff because you jealous of Luca. We ain't got time for you. DeAndre Jordan, I know you happy. You came over to Dallas, but guess what? You going to the Knicks. You know, just a lot of different things going on. Tim Hardaway to Dallas. It just, and then they got a pick, I believe. Did they get a pick? I think they got a, they probably didn't get a pick. I, they got a lot of different players. You know, another trade to look out for, Anthony Davis possibly going to the Lakers, which everyone is expecting. You know, they're thinking about trading Lonzo Ball, Kyle Kuzma, Brandon Ingram, Zobeck, and a first round pick for Anthony Davis. So I'm just thinking, well, damn. Anthony Davis, we already know he's going to resign there. Rich, Rich Paul is his agent, a.k.a. Bron, one of Bron right-hand mans, or childhood friends. Um, excuse me, who else? Uh, it's a lot of different things. Keith Thurman, him fighting. Josito Lopez, oh my goodness. For my boxing fans, listen. Keith Thurman, I've been, I'm a big boxing fan, so y'all might hear me speak on boxing a lot more on my show. But Keith Thurman, yo. He did a pretty good job um, being off for almost two years. But listen, I never seen Keith Thurman look the way he looked after getting punched. You know, like he got socked to the point where his face, his jaw almost left his face. Like it was like bad. You feel me? Like Earl Spence, I feel like Earl Spence is the most dominant welterweight in the division. A lot of people run from him for a reason. You know, he breaks people down and then he finishes you. Like Mortal Kombat, finish him. Like he finishes people. You know, a lot of people are scared of him. And then you got people like Terrence, Terrence Crawford, who's up and coming in welterweight, who's about to fight American next in April, which you may see me at. You know, he's up and coming, but a lot of people feel as though he's the number one pound for pound or the best welterweight. And then you got people like myself and other notable boxers. Like, hold up. I'm not a boxer, just to let y'all know, because I put myself in notable boxers in the same sense. But people, some people feel as though he's the best, and I'm thinking to myself, like, how is he the best? And he just stepped up to this division. He didn't fight anyone in the, in the division. And now he's about to fight Amir um, Glass Jaw Khan. Now it's going to make me think, if he beat Amir Khan, is, are we going to say he's a shit? Like, like I, I want to know. You feel me? Reasons why I respect people like Earl Spence, because when he beat Kell Brook in London, and he beat Lamont Peterson in Brooklyn, he said, yo, I want to fight the best. I want to fight Danny Garcia. I want to fight um, Sean Porter. And I want to fight Keith Thurman. Mind you, all three of those people at that time were champions. All three of them. What champion do you know that want to fight champions? You know how people are like, oh, I'm going to take some time off. Me and my team going to think about it. The typical bullshit scared answers. This man is saying, I want to fight y'all. I'm talking directly to y'all. I want to fight y'all. And a lot of people are ducking him because I feel like when he fought, when he sparred Floyd Mayweather before Mayweather fought Pacquiao, he blacked or left a mark under Floyd's eye. And y'all probably like, wow, a mark. If you know Floyd Mayweather sparring sessions, no one touches Floyd or hurts Floyd like that. So they had to kick Earl Spence out of camp. Because he fucked Floyd up. That's why I'm thinking people are scared of him. Javante Davis just recently said, man, Terrence Crawford mad at me because I said Earl Spencer beat him the fuck up. This is real. You know, and I don't box to be knowing what they know. But I'm just going off of what I see. And he's saying the same thing. Saying the same exact thing. You know, a lot of different events is going on in the city of Philadelphia. It's cold as shit. It feel like it's Chicago, or should I say Green Bay? You feel me? Or should I say New England? <laughs> Which one? Or Buffalo? You tell me. And they all cold. You know, football weather. You feel me? You got Green Bay is always cold out there. It's cold in Philly. It was negative 60 in Chicago the other day. I went on Instagram. I seen a squirrel frozen. It's cold out here. You feel me? Cold is as my grandpa would say. It's colder than a witch's tit. I ain't never understood that, but that's an old head slang. Oh, here's saying right there. You feel me? But like I said, I was excited um, to bring this episode in with you guys because I haven't been as consistent as I want. I really appreciate y'all being um, on my back about my episodes dropping weekly. And also, I really appreciate all the subscribers and the support that I'm getting for the Dev Hall Show. Um, each and every episode that I'm dropping, I'm trying to get it to be better than it was the previous episode. Um, this is my first episode. Um, by myself in the studio, um, speaking on some topics that 
I feel as though it was very important. And I hope y'all like this episode of the Dev Hall Show. You know, um, sponsored by Headquarters Media. And you know how this shit go. You already know. And we got the Black Cat here for good luck, not bad. <laughs>